Alcorn leads the overall series 40-29 and 2. You see head coach Fred McNair in his seventh season at his alma mater won two SWAC titles in 2018 and 19 when they were in the East Division looking for his first championship in the West. And Eric Dooley's in his second season. How have you made him so far at Southern, Ken? He's done an outstanding job. He came over from Prairie View A&M two seasons ago, six years overall as a head coach. He's coaching, coaching at his alumni as well, and he's done a great job here at Southern getting this team on the brink of another trip to the SWAC championship game. Alcorn will kick, and we are underway on a fantastic Saturday. Bit of a short kick, fielded by one of the up men and taken down. Decent field position here for the Southern offense. Our impact players this afternoon, Ken. Well, for Southern, it's going to be all about the defensive ends. Kelby Givens and Taj Brown, they combined for 10 sacks on the season, 23 and a half tackles for loss. On the other side, Jarvion Howard, the leading rusher in the Southwestern Athletic Conference, and Montario Hunt, the leading receiver in the SWAC. Just looking through the stats here before, so many guys, top five, are leading. This really is the battle of the day here in the SWAC. Harold Blood is the starting quarterback for Southern. They will have first down and 10 yards to go. Alongside Ken Moore, Jason Metko with you today on first down. Pass over the middle, caught at the 20. Spinning past the 30. First down yardage up to around the 33. As that is hauled in by Ed McGee. That's only his 10th catch of the season since 1-190 one, one senior. Harold Blood really had his struggles last week against Texas Southern. Only completed 8 of 26 passes for 58 yards, but he's already off to a good start this afternoon. Rhymes on first down, lit up at the 34. Powerful hit by Kenan Leachman, the free safety. Well, we talked about this all-corn defense ranked third in the SWAC in points per game. They only give up 15 points per contest. Your keys to the game today brought to you by GM. Well, for Southern, they want to get pressure on Aaron Allen when they're on defense, force him off his spots. They want to quiet this crowd. You see how loud they are early in this ball game, and it's all about beats and rhymes in the backfield. Kendrick Rhymes. They want to get him on track. And there is a sack registered for the Braves. It's Malachi Bailey coming from the defensive end spot. Watch Bailey. You see that action up front, and then he just beats the right tackle and guard, slips inside between the two of them, the 6'2", 260-pound junior. It is third down in quite a while here. These are the places that... The Southern offense do not want to be behind the chains against this aggressive defense of the Braves. You hear the reservation roaring right now. And it's the last game on the reservation this season. It is the home finale in the regular season on third and long. Blood rolling, low throw, and it is caught, no, dropped at the 30. In any event, it is fourth down coming up, and we will see Southern punt. Yeah, watch this pressure coming from the right side. Just the inside move and then a little uh, technique on the outside, a little swim move. They ran a stunt that time, confused that offensive line of Southern, forced Blood to get rid of the football low. So after that initial first down, three consecutive negative plays for the Jaguars, and they'll have to punt it away. So the, the four-play drive goes nowhere. Here's Robin's bow plan to punt. One of the best punters in the swag. A good kick. And field at the 30. And the ball's on the ground. Oh boy. <laughs> and Alcorn says they have, or Southern says they have it, and they do. And you know, Jason, in these ball games, sometimes it comes down to special team plays and mistakes. And the Alcorn Braves make the first mistake of the afternoon, a high sky, McNair receives it, but then it's punched out, and there's a team of Jaguars there to pounce on it, so Southern forces the first break of the afternoon. Akeem McNair with the fumble and the tough break. Now Southern with excellent field position. See if they can do something with it here. Well, the electricity just got ramped up even more for the visitors on first down from the 35. 
A draw play to the 30. Second down coming up. At right rush from Kylan Lampton, listed as a wide receiver. Gain of three, bringing up second down. Another draw past the 30, down around the 27. And this is what Southern wants to do. They want to get this running game going on the ground. They want to loosen up this all-corn defense. Not, not get in those third and long, second and long situations where the Braves can just pin their ears back and come after Harold Blood. Two good running plays on first and second down. Now you have a third and short. And maybe we see Rhymes coming back in here on third and two. Braves defense third in the SWAC this season, averaging 15 points a game. They'll go high formation here on third and two. Blood is going to throw it towards the end zone. It's caught inside the five. Down to the one. First and goal upcoming for Southern. What a play. You had two receivers in the same area. It looked like it was going to be a touchdown pass to one of the receivers. Then the receiver from the left catches it at the two. Watch it. It looks like a touchdown to the man up top, and his teammate takes it away right at the one-yard line. But nevertheless, it's going to be first and goal for the Jaguars after the fumble recovery on the punt. That was Jermaine Minor Jr., his first catch of the season. No time like the present, Ken. First and goal. Well, I'm sure his teammates are not too happy about that. He took the <laughs> touchdown away. <laughs> Delayed draw, left side, wide open, touchdown Southern. Mr. Rhymes has six on the board early. Well, the Jaguars take advantage of the all-corn mistake early in this one. Just a good off-tackle run to the left side. And Kendrick Rams starts the game the same way he ended it last week with a touchdown run. He got the game-winning walk-off against Texas Southern in overtime in Baton Rouge a week ago. That is his sixth rushing touchdown of the season. And we've got Joshua Griffin on to attempt the point after Made a 54-yard field goal last week. This one currently left, but it's still good. Kendrick Rhyme starts the party early for Southern. They lead 7-0 here on ESPN.
Slack Football on ESPN is presented by Pepsi, official partner of the Southwestern Athletic Conference. And by GM, proud sponsor of the Slack. Pretty good start for Kendrick Rhymes, wouldn't you say, Ken? His sixth rushing touchdown of the season, and it all was resulting of a mistake on special teams by the Braves. Yeah, the Braves have to be solid on special teams. An early mistake kind of quiets this crowd and another mistake. Finally corralled and settled down by Alcorn. That is the second player we've seen here with a touch of fumbleitis, but that time it did not come back to burn the Braves. The return man that time was Harold Blood. Keys the game brought to you by GM. Well, for Alcorn, they, have, well, they want to have a balanced attack on offense. They want to be able to run the football to set up the passing game for Aaron Allen. They want to force turnovers, not make turnovers, as they've done already in this ball game. And they want the reservation to war or Their last game here at home, it's senior day, but the Jaguars have already taken this crowd somewhat out of the game. Let's see what the best player at the quarterback position statistically in the SWAC can do in Aaron Allen first down. He'll throw to the far side of the field where it's caught at the 31. And Akeem McNair makes his way past the 40, up to the 41. But the key this afternoon is going to be controlling those edge rushers of Southern, making sure that Allen has time in the pocket to complete these passes downfield. Gained 11. Allen drops back. Escapes and throws away incomplete. Jaguar defense ranked second so far this season in the swag, only giving up 14 points a game. And you saw that inside pressure that time forcing Aaron Allen off of his spot, making him uncomfortable and forcing that incompletion. Quite the resume, this young man from Missouri City, Texas, just outside the Houston area. Yeah, you see what he did last week against Mississippi Valley, 17 of 25, 171 yards, one interception in that ball game. Coach McNair said they struggled last week early in the red zone, had some red zone penalties, but eventually they got the offense going in the second half. Allen looked like he was going to run. Instead, he throws it. It's caught up near the 35. Could grab that time from Tavarius Adams, his 12th catch of the season. The red shirt sophomore out of Meridian, Mississippi. You see Allen stepping up in the pocket, delivering the football on target, picking up a big first down. On first down, Allen dumps it off right, incomplete. That was a forward pass for Howard, and he dropped it. And again, you see Southern getting to Allen, forcing him outside the pocket. We've seen him have to move already three times early in this ball game. So right now, the Southern defensive front is putting the pressure on that O-line of Alcorn State. For as good as these defenses are, are you expecting a low-scoring game today, Kim? Man, you really don't know because the turnovers can really turn the tide. And if you give an offense a short field like we saw a little while ago, that could increase the scores in these games. On first down, Allen right on a screen to Griffin. Tavarius Griffin stumbles his way inside the 30 and signals first down. With this all-court offense, they averaged 348 yards per game, 194 through the air, 154 on the ground. That's the type of balance that they want to have in this ball game. Griffin Hailing from Tallahassee, Alabama. I didn't know they had a Tallahassee, Alabama. I was going to read it as Florida, <laughs> and then I saw Alabama and went, okay. <laughs> There's always multiple town names somewhere, aren't there? <laughs> At the 34, to be exact, on first down, Allen going deep, near side, double coverage and completes. Good read defensively as they were looking for Adams again. Yeah, poor read that time by Allen, throwing in the double coverage, too deep safety look for Southern on that play. And this is a ball-hawking defense by the Jaguars. Not a bad throw from Allen here, though. They're led in that secondary by Jordan Carter. You see him come over to break up the play. Carter leads the team with three INTs. He also has two fumble recoveries on the season, Jordan Carter. Second and ten. 
Dump it left. Inside the 30. And that is Williams. So far, so good for Alcorn, steadying the ship on this offensive drive. Well, you see Aaron Allen, and this is why he's one of the best quarterbacks, if not the best quarterback in the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Very poised, under pressure. He was hurt most of last season, but won the job in training camp this year, and he's been very, very good. On third and four, quick dump off to Williams inside the 20 first down. And Alcorn is in the red zone for the first time this afternoon. Anthony Williams, Jr., he came into this ball game with only two receptions on the season. Already two receptions on this drive. His coach, Fred McNair, comes out with a little razzle-dazzle, bringing a new weapon into the affray of Alcorn here this afternoon. Checking the sidelines on first and ten. And just joining us, Southern scored first. Kendrick Rhymes ran it in from inside five yards. It all happened because the Braves had a muffed punt. Allen might run it. He does. Still on his feet inside the ten and taken down at the eight. Good heads up play there for Mr. Allen. Great job by Aaron Allen. Watch it here. This time he does have time in the pocket. No one open, but he catches Southern in man-to-man -man defense and no spy on the quarterback so he takes advantage, picks up a nice gain, gets down inside the 10. Still can pick up another yard for a first down. Spread him out. Second and one, Allen throws and sail it over everybody. Good play to throw it out of bounds. Bring up second down. Check that third down now. And Allen took a pretty good hit there, too, Ken. Yeah, he's slow rise to his feet. Yeah, he, he's slowly going back to the huddle there. And for Alcorn in the red zone so far this season, it's been a bit of a struggle. 23 trips inside the red zone, only 12 converted into touchdowns. Had a hold there, too, called on T.J. Yarbrough, the left tackle. Well, this is what played the Braves last week early in their ball game against Mississippi Valley. They had penalties in the red zone that pushed them back and made that game a lot tighter than it should have been early on. You cannot afford these type of penalties against a tough Southern defense that loves to keep you out of the end zone. In some ways, though, it does open the playbook a little bit because you're not up against the goal line like you were before here. You've got some breathing room. But it is second down and 11. Alcorn looking to tie this contest early on. Southern with a one deep safety look. Whistles and more flags. Mm. All start. Number 72. Offense. Five yard penalty. Second down. The left guard will ready call for the start. So these would be the type of penalties you would expect the road team to have with the loud crowd noise making it difficult for the snaps to get in. With the home team, you don't expect these type of penalties early in this one. So the Braves a little shaky early here on the reservation. Second and long. And this is Tyler Macon, the backup quarterback, running it. And he is inside the 20 down to the 16. Making 12 carries this season for a buck 42 and a score. And one wonders about the status of Aaron Allen. It's a good job by making just on the zone read that time. It looks like Allen is back in the ball game for this big third down now for Alcorn. Under six and a half to go. Braves on the season converting 37% of their red, uh, third down opportunities. Allen with time. Skirts to the right. Feeling the heat. Still with it. Lobs it up. And incomplete. That's what we call coverage D, courtesy of Southern. Great job by that Jaguar defense on the back end. Nowhere for Aaron Allen to go with the football. And so you see the result of those two penalties now. They're going to make it a much more difficult field goal situation here for Alcorn. 
Noah Kiani is the place kicker. And this will be roughly a 34-yard field goal attempt. And one wonders how much the hold and then follow that up by the false start really killed Alcorn's chances of finding six here. But they will try for three. Caleb Darbone is the holder. And the crowd reacting like there should have been a flag for movement, but the kick is up. And Keani makes it. And Alcorn is on the board. Alcorn State back in it. They trail 7-3. More football coming up right after this. You're on ESPN. Athletes disappearing. Clutch moments through the falling hydration levels. Mm. Get yourself back in the game. Get yourself a Gatorade. Rehydrate, replenish, refuel. We are exactly what you think. We are not at all what you think. We are past, present, and future. All in one. Because the best way to honor our history is to make history. General Motors, honored to sponsor the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Doritos created Solid Black in 2021 to help fuel the initiatives of black leaders seeking to drive real change. And this year, Doritos Solid Black is welcoming 16 new change makers to the program. We are Solid Black. Huge play coming up. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Talking about dropping the ball. I got the score. <laughs> Tostitos Hardy Dippers. Every year, thousands of athletes disappear in clutch moments through the falling hydration levels. Mm. Get yourself back in the game. Get yourself a Gatorade. Rehydrate, replenish, refuel. In 1920, an athletic league was formed and slowly became one of the leading sports associations in the world of collegiate athletics, the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Today, the SWAC is looking towards the next century, growing, supporting, and transforming our intercollegiate sports activities for student athletes and promoting academic excellence. Each SWAC member institution represents a high level of integrity and sportsmanship. We are the SWAC, building champions for life. What a picture-perfect day today. And a pretty good score so far early as both teams have found the scoreboard. Jason Metco, Ken Moore, and all of you. Alcorn pulling to within a 7-3 deficit courtesy of a 13-play, 55-yard drive that took a little more than four and a half minutes. But Ken, the real key, as we see another miscue this time by Southern. Boy, no one's being able to field the ball cleanly on kicks today. Wow, that's the third ball put on the ground. And you see the scoring drop by Alcorn. 13 plays, 55 yards, but they had those two penalties in the red zone, just like they had last week against Mississippi Valley, and that turns a touchdown opportunity into a field goal, and again, you see the fumble on the kickoff return. I wonder, would it be in a high sky if guys are having problems with the sun, particularly being in their eyes? And a little bit of an altercation after as one of the Alcorn players bumped into a Southern player, and Fans on both sides thinking there should have been a flag on somebody. Finishing that drive, by the way, for Alcorn, a 34-yard field goal good by Noah Keanu. So Southern has it for the third time today. Their first drive picked up four plays and then punted it and then picked the ball back up off a muff punt, which was run in for a one-yard touchdown courtesy of Kendrick Rimes. And Blunt on first down throws right and incomplete around the 29. But Blood, he, he needs his receivers to make plays. Drop passes have played this ball club this year. Inaccuracy at times from Blood and inconsistency as well. They pulled out a miraculous win against Texas Southern last week, a game in which they were outgained 443 yards to 201. 
Late flag comes in and making his way up to the 30 is Rhymes. But we'll see what the yellow laundry is for. Looks like in the area of a hold. There is no foul on the play. All action was legal. Okay. Every action that took place was legal. <laughs> Didn't John Madden once famously say there's holding on every play? Every play. <laughs> it's like saying everybody on the highway is driving the speed limit. There's no, there's no infractions on this roadway. That has not happened, that's for sure. <laughs> Quickly, third and ten here, Ken, and they'll go trips basically back to back to back on the far side of the field. Blood with time. We'll air it out deep over the middle. Incomplete. The Southern fans wanting a flag, but the defense of the Braves shuts that down. Yeah, they had three receivers stacked to the top of the screen. They come back to the one-on-one -on -one receiver to the short side, and a great coverage that time by Geno Johnson, the sophomore from Gulfport, Mississippi, getting back to break it up. Now another Southern punt, and Akeem McNair is back to receive. Hopefully his hands are a little more secure of the football this time. At least that's what the Alcorn faithful are holding. We're hoping. Bo Plant stands at his own five. Another good kick. McNair will take it back at the 27. And made it to around the 26 as a plethora of Southern Jaguars stormed him. Side Ken Moore, Jason Metko with you today on this picture perfect day. Not a cloud in the sky. Beautiful, beautiful afternoon for football. Finally, real football weather here, <laughs> first weekend of November. It's taken a long time to get here. We had a, a night, couple of nice cool days in October, and then last week it warmed up a bit in the conference around the swag, but today is, is excellent football weather for basically the championship game of the SWAC. The winner of this game takes advantage the last two weeks of the season. Allen and the boys from the 26 on first down. There's a carry up the middle. And we keep seeing fresh faces come in here for Alcorn to run the ball. At that time it was, I believe, Kobe Downs who ran it. Picked up four. Allen out of the gun. We'll throw it left. Wide open man, 45. And a first down as Akeem McNair snares it in. A good blocking this time. You see the combination of blocks up front to give Allen time in the pocket. And he finds McNair just in front of that zone defense. Big gain on first down as they get across midfield. Fast-moving first quarter. Draw play on first down. Nothing doing there as the Jaguar D slams the door. Yeah, you see big 92, Kelby Givens getting in the backfield, stopping them for no gain. That combination of he and Taj Brown has been tremendous this season. That is Jacorian Sewell, a 5'10", 185 redshirt sophomore from Natchez, Mississippi, running the football. So Fred McNair is bringing out a whole bunch of players here in the home regular season finale. Sewell had a big run last week, a 62-yard touchdown run against Mississippi Valley. On second down, Allen over the middle. And it is hauled in by Adams. Spreading the football around to a plethora of receivers here this afternoon. This time making the grand is Adams, the 6'1 sophomore out of Meridian, Mississippi. Allen, single coverage down the far sideline, caught, walk the dog, touchdown, Alcorn. There's Montario Hunt. And that's why he was one of the impact players this afternoon. He's the leading receiver in the SWAC, averaging over 15 yards a catch. 
one-on-one -on -one coverage on the outside. That's not going to get it done against Mr. Montario Hunt as he goes big game hunting in this big game this afternoon. What a great throw from Allen, too. Only place that could be caught there was Hunt down the far sideline. Keani to attempt the point after as Alcorn's now up by two. And now up by three. What a response from Alcorn on senior day. Allen connecting with Hunt. And the lead belongs to the Braves. Well, in a big game, big players make big plays, and Montario Hunt certainly did that to give Alcorn the lead here, Ken. Yeah, 35-yard touchdown reception. Watch him at the top. You see that release move? And once he beat the defensive back at the line of scrimmage, no one was going to catch him, and it was a beautiful throw by Aaron Allen that led him perfectly, but it was that initial move off the line of scrimmage that gave him that separation against the defensive back. See there, five plays, 73 yards, capped off by that 35-yard touchdown pass from Allen to Hunt. And right now, it's Alcorn in the driver's seat. But as we have seen so far early on here, Ken, momentum is a fickle entity. <laughs> there will be a lot of momentum shifts in this ball game this afternoon. Ball on the ground again. I feel like we've been saying that a little too much. It will stay with Southern. These teams may want to go ahead and revert to fair catching the football because every special team's return, the football has landed on the turf. Luckily for the Jaguars, they pounce on this one and retain possession. So we'll see what Harold Blood and this offense of Southern can do as they now trail by three with just a little over three to go till the end of the first alongside Ken Moore, Jason Metko, and our entire crew. Glad to be with you on this sunny Saturday in November. It actually feels like November. <laughs> Blood out of the shotgun with rhymes to his left. Had that one-yard touchdown run earlier. And on first down, he breaks the 25 up to the 26. Ball came out, though. Picked up by the Braves to the goal line. Touchdown. Kenan Leachman has six more for Alcorn. Jason, you talk about a momentum shift. Rhymes running inside. And 
Leecham just snatches, Leachman just snatches the football from him. Give me your Halloween candy, young man. I'm going to take it to my house, not to your house. He took the Reese's Pieces, the Hershey bars, the Almond Joys. He took the whole bag and took it to the crib. A momentum change and then some. P.A.T. Kanani. Yes, sir. Mr. Leachman with the strip. Check the replay here. Let's see if Leachman's knee came down, Ken, after he stripped it, or maybe the knee came down of Rhymes. Let's see. Strips the football here. Now, I think the football was out. The football was out before Rhymes hit the turf. Good no call by the officials. And what a play by Kenan Leachman. And this is an all corn defense that has just been tremendous taking the football away this season. They are plus 10 in the turnover ratio on the season. And the Braves defense strikes back. That didn't take long. Didn't even need the offense. The high power of Allen there to get the job done. See how Southern responds from that. Boy, special teams have been special. Defenses have been just as important, and that Braves defense, which ranks third, and the swag getting the job done, courtesy of Leachman. Jaguars, as we mentioned, giving up only 14 points a game. They've already coughed up 17, and we're not even done with the first quarter. Jaguars trying to respond, though. Crossing 35 up near the 40. Talk about the momentum shifts in this football game. Look at the number of plays early on in this one. All corner 16 to 12 thus far. The average per play, the Braves nearly 9 yards per play to less than four for the Jags. Lampton with a good run back. And now Harold Blood and the men of Southern will retake the field yet again. Trailing all of the sudden just by 10 points. Escalating quickly. Blood out of the gun. Low snap on first down. Over the middle. Pass is tipped. Is it picked? It is. Interception. And it's Leachman again making a big play. Oh, my goodness. The defensive MVP of the first quarter. Blood, low snap. Pass off the hands of his intended receiver. Was that Rhymes again? And then right into the hands of Leachman. I think he wants more Halloween candy, Ken. So he just gave him the candy that time before he took it away from him. This time off the hands of Rams, the old tip drill, and the Baton Rouge product having himself an afternoon. A strip fumble, not really a strip fumble. He just ripped it from Rhymes' hands, ran in for a score. And now he has an interception. And here comes Allen with great field position, first and ten. And he'll go deep down the far sideline again. And incomplete around the five-yard line as he was trying to meet up with Hunt one more time. Well, they tried to go for the quick strike after the change of possession, and Hunt once again had a step on the defensive back, Marcel, but that pass just kind of sailed out of bounds on Aaron Allen. So a break for Southern. But the Jaguars on their heels right now, trailing by 10, trying to just regroup and settle down. Nico Duffy is in motion. Second and 10. Allen, quick throw left. Got a screen set up. Hunt inside the 30. And down at around the 28. Ontario already has a score today. Yeah, just a little simple screen pass. Good blocking on the outside, getting a big offensive lineman out in front. You see his bodyguard escort, Tyler Smith. And now it's going to be to actually pick up the first down, so give him 10 on the reception. Interesting here. Allen has gone off to the far side as a wide receiver on this play. 
Macon is his quarterback. And he'll keep it himself as a Southern player just lost his balance and Macon makes his way down to the 14. Seeing all the tricks here from Fred McNair today. Well, absolutely. And Macon can run the rock. As you mentioned, they spread Allen out to the top. Still have Javarion Howard in the backfield to his right. Just a little inside zone. You see the good block by Howard, and you see Macon running right into your living room, picking up a nice game in all court again inside the red zone, looking for more. Already leading by 10. First down play. Up the middle inside the 10, down to around the 9. Macon again. Something about guys wearing number 7 in purple today. Leachman on D and Macon on <laughs> offense. Red shirt sophomore out of St. Louis, Missouri. He'll come out of the ball game now. The designated running quarterback, if you will, so far here this afternoon. Picked up five. And how would this be for Alcorn if they could score before the end of the first, Ken? This would be huge, huge. Aaron Allen back at quarterback. Coming to his right. Throws it towards the end zone incomplete. Good coverage again by the Jaguars. Was looking for McNair zone. there. As you mentioned, just excellent coverage. Nowhere to run. Tried to get McNair in the corner. Kristen Davis, the cornerback, making the defensive stop. A big third down now here, really, for this Jaguar defense. They want to force a stop, try to slow down this momentum. You force them to a field goal, it's still a two-possession game. Man in motion, that's Malik Rogers. Oh. And Rogers somehow picks up the football and he's inside the five and he's <laughs> in the goal line. He crossed it. It's a touchdown. And now late flags come in. And fighting words exchanged. Probably not about Halloween candy. I mean, it appeared from our angle that Rogers crossed the goal line. Absolutely. I'm not sure how, after he picked up the fumble, able to slither his way into the end zone. And now the officials will need to sort out the matter. I'm not sure if it's a post-possession flag or during the play. Tepper's riding high here early. If it stands, it would be an eight yard touchdown run for Rodgers. And by my count, that would be his first rushing score of the season. That would be the first time he's actually rushed the football. But we wait to see what the laundry is about that came after the play was over. And we believe the ruling on the field is a touchdown. The result of the play is a touchdown. After the touchdown, unsportsmanlike conduct, Number 85, offense. That 15-yard penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. This is 85's first unsportsmanlike conduct out of the game. So they call that on Tavarius Griffin, the tight end. That will not have Fred McNair happy. However, Alcorn has padded the lead. Off a wild play where Malik Rogers was in motion, then dropped the football picked it up and ran it in anyway. <laughs> We've seen a, a lot of action and we haven't even gotten to the end of the first quarter yet. Fumble kickoffs, fumble punts, interceptions, fumble recoveries. And now a mishap turns into another six for all four state. The PAT from Keani is good. Well, we've seen a little bit of everything here in this first quarter, and we still got ways to go. Malik Rogers in motion. Able to save it, and then pressing towards the goal line and scoring. One more look here, Ken. The ball actually did not hit the ground. 
I thought it did, but Rogers yeah. tipped it up his hands and then was able to snare it back in. Excellent job getting into the end zone. Saw the football from Paul Luce there as well. But this all corn crowd, they are having themselves a time this afternoon as their Braves have a 17 point lead early in this one. Six plays, 40 yards. Capped off by that wonderful run by Rogers. I hand coordination just fantastic to make that play a possibility. So two back-to-back -back turnovers by Southern leads to 14 quick points by Alcorn. This after the Braves fumbled their first punt of the game to set up the one-yard touchdown run by Kendrick Rhymes. So Rhymes has been involved in scores for both teams so far here this afternoon. Now remember, the penalty due to Griffith is why we see Keani kicking it back at the 20. No fair catch this time, and Southern will try to make hay, and they do. They cross the 40 up to the 43-yard line. Turn there from Howard. 12 seconds to go in a very busy first quarter. Alcorn looking good. Courtesy of some offense with Allen and Griffin. We look at Harold Blood. For the most part, he's been held in check as the lone score today for Southern has come from a one-yard touchdown run from Kendrick Rhymes. Yeah, Blood, he's had an up-and-down season, over 1,600 yards passing, 10 touchdowns, but the eight interceptions have been a concern for the grad student. Well, presumably this will be the last play of the quarter unless Southern picks up a first down. Just his helmet, he's ready to go. Standing to the right of Blood. Another low snap, and Blood just has to go down at the 35. That's the way the first quarter should end, right? <laughs> Was something unusual? With yeah. The ball on the ground. Yeah. Not typical. Atypical, I believe, is the correct word. Alcorn, Alcorn State with a sizable lead, 24-7. We're done with one. On the first quarter.
Well, that was quite the eventful first quarter, wasn't it? <laughs> well, if you joined us late, you missed quite a party in the first period. Alcorn with a 24-7 lead, three turnovers in that first half. And you see the Braves coming in with a big sack that time. Jacquez Dew getting in on Harold Blood. That was straight right at him, too. Yeah, I mean, that was a, a mix-up on the offensive line. He came in unabated to the quarterback, and it's going to be third and long right now for the Jaguars, two out of Ellenwood, Georgia. What do you draw up here, Ken, on third and 24? Screen pass to Rhymes and tell him to hold on to the football. It's been a bit of a plague today for both sides trying to hold on to the ball securely enough. Third and very long. Draw play two rhymes. And Kendrick able to make his way up to the 39. Check that. That's Dillon running the ball. Kobe Dillon. First carry for him today. Picked up about 15, but well short of the sticks. Yeah, good job by Dillon. Just picking up some positive yardage. Want to try to flip the field position as best you can for this punting situation. See if you can force the Braves maybe into another fumble punt here or at least flip the field position a bit. Akeem McNair back to receive. He had a muff punt early in the contest. That resulted in Rhyme scoring from one yard out eventually. It's all scoring, though, for Southern today. McNair will stay away from this one and has a Southern hop inside the 15. Alcorn, 24-7 on Southern, early stages, second quarter. When you join the HBCU family, you become part of the tradition of breaking barriers in your community, breaking ground in your career, and bringing it with everything you do. From how you look to how you move in the classroom, on the court, and on the field. That's why Academy Sports and Outdoors is proud to celebrate the HBCU legacy and all those to add to it in their own way. We are exactly what you think. We are not at all what you think. We are past, present, and future, all in one. Because the best way to honor our history is to make history. General Motors, honored to sponsor the Southwestern Athletic Conference. The future starts today. With 34 undergraduate programs and 22 graduate programs, finding your career path is within your reach at Southern University and A&M College. The best way to a successful future is to invest in it through an affordable education at Southern University. Southern University is growing in order to lead you to a bright future. Start your future here, here at Southern University and a and College. In 1920, an athletic league was formed and slowly became one of the leading sports associations in the world of collegiate athletics, the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Today, the SWAC is looking towards the next century, growing, supporting, and transforming our intercollegiate sports activities for student athletes and promoting academic excellence. Each SWAC member institution represents a high level of integrity and sportsmanship. We are the SWAC, building champions for life. See a little more than 13 minutes to go to the half. Alongside great Ken Moore. Jason Metka with you. Alcorn putting up 24 in that first quarter. Didn't think we'd have that on the bingo card today, did we? Mm. Allen on first down. Running play up to the 20. And there's Javarian Howard, or Jarvian Howard, 5'10", 200 graduate. Has a little more than 100 carries on the season. So it's been interesting so far of this all-corn offense going against this tough Southern rush defense. Southern only gives up three and a half yards per carry, but we've seen the Braves attack them in different ways so far in that first period. More conventional here on the first two running plays to Howard, while we saw Macon 
on the zone reads coming in as the backup quarterback. We saw the jet sweep for the touchdown to Malik Rogers. So Alcorn trying to find a variety of ways to run against this tough southern inside front. Tavarius Griffin has returned as the tight end here on third and three. By the way, we should note this is 24 unanswered points by the Braves. Southern scored first to receive a one-yard touchdown run by Rhymes. Third and three. Allen, left flat, caught. First down yardage and more. Continuing to move the ball well with the Braves. Well, that is the sixth receiver to catch a football this afternoon. Tyron Warren, the 6'3 freshman, with the reception that time. But Aaron Allen is spreading the football all around to his receivers this afternoon. No one for this Jaguar defense to key in on. McNair goes to the far side of the field in motion. From the 35, Allen dumps it off quickly over the middle. Howard past the 45 and to around the 46. The patience of Aaron Allen in the pocket. Everything doesn't have to be a deep throw downfield. If it's not there, let me get the quick check down to my tailback. Not allow this Southern defensive front to get to me. No sacks so far today for this Jaguar defense. And the Braves with no issues running the clock here after putting up that 24 spot in the first. On first down, draw play. Howard tries to go right end to around the 48. Tackled there by Kevin Roach. 6'1", 185 senior. And Howard will take a breather. After all the excitement of the first quarter, this second quarter seems a bit tame right now, Ken. I <laughs> think the teams are finally settling into the ball game. It was like a race car in that first period. Allen on second and eight. Wide open caught inside the 30. Griffin inside the 20 to the goal line. Tavarius Griffin adds another six for the Braves. Spoke too soon, partner. Big play. Griffin all alone in the secondary. Gets past the safety and then makes a nice move inside to shed the tackle of Rodney Johnson. And all corn Braves on a heater right now. 30 in a row against the Jags. Johnson had two chances there and could not bring down the big man. Keani to try to put up 31. Well, when you're hot, you're hot, Ken. So hot, you see the flames and the smoke. Tavarius Griffin. Good pass here from Allen, and then Griffin will just break one, two, and one more for good measure. It's all Braves in the first half.
Well, the Jags and the Braves coming into this one with identical records and identical records in the swag. But Tavarius Griffin and the boys are making big plays here today, Ken. Yeah, six play, 86 yard drive. Tavarius Griffin with a 52 yard catch and run. 317 off the clock for the Braves on that scoring drive. And all Corn State all over their rivals from Southern this afternoon. Long way to go in this one, but the Jaguars, they have to wake up. And the stout special team shut down Dillon. Jaguars will try to regroup here. If you're just joining us, you have missed a lot of points. All by the home team for the most part. Southern scored the first. And that all came off a muffed punt opportunity that Alcorn was not able to bring back successfully. Well, we talked in the open about how Southern was really fortunate to be in the situation that they're in. Um, they had a really tough game against Texas Southern last week, a game in which they were outgained by over 200 yards. Big hit that time after a nice first down run. Texas Southern had 15 more minutes time of possession last week and 15 more first downs, but somehow Southern found a way to come back and win that ball game. Watch this stick against Kendrick Rhymes. Good hit number in that truck. Good hit by Robert McDaniel. Back up Nickelback. Positive momentum there for Southern. A first down run from Rhymes, who has the lone score today. Play fake by Blood near side. And near the Braves bench was it hauled in. Colby Washington was the intended receiver. And the Braves bench has some words for Mr. Washington. Well, let's see if he came down with one foot in bounds. Throw to the boundary, couldn't tell there. Officials say he was way out of bounds. So Side judge be, says incomplete. Yep, so it'll be second down and 10 for Southern. And they just haven't been able to get into a rhythm. Only have three first downs today. The Braves have 13. Second down, blood, high catch, pulled in. And picking up some of the yardage, it's Qualls. For the Jaguars, you just want to stack a few first downs, try to move the ball downfield, see if you can get some points to kind of quiet this crowd here in Lorman. They like that reservation roar, and they have been roaring all afternoon. Gain of seven for Qualls. Big third and three here. The Jags will keep it on the ground, and Rhymes is not going to have the first down. Tyler Smith, the defensive end, making the play. So now decision time. You see Rhymes talking with his big offensive lineman, Fields, looking for a better block that time. And again, Southern, they're able to get only one first down on that drive, and you see the frustration starting to ball over for the Jaguars. And again, just a missed block that time. And that's what has Rhymes frustrated. Southern will punt, presumably. I think you have to punt at this point. You can't be thinking about going for it. Kick is away from Bo Plan. McNair will watch this trickle out inside the 10. Good kick from Southern. See what the Braves can do, going 90 yards the other way to maybe put up some more offensive points here in this first half. Come back with you right after this. HBCUs are anchored by legacy. They nurture the talent and determination of their students and prepare them for a bright future. The Home Depot's Retool Your School program has and still believes in the excellence of HBCUs. Committed not just in speech, but through the revitalization and upgrades of the campuses these students call home. Building, planting, tilling the dream, all hearts and countless volunteers on the ground. Retool Your School, we're powered by purpose. <laughs> 
Doritos created yeah, Solid Black in 2021 to help fuel the initiatives of black leaders seeking to drive real change. And this year, Doritos Solid Black is welcoming 16 new change makers to the program. We are Solid Black. Every year, thousands of athletes disappear in clutch moments through the fall in hydration levels. Mm. Get yourself back in the game. Get yourself a Gatorade. Rehydrate, replenish, refuel. Huge play coming up. Oh, Talking about dropping the ball. I got the score. Tostitos Hardy Dippers. We are exactly what you think. We are not at all what you think. We are past, present, and future. All in one. Because the best way to honor our history is to make history. General Motors, honored to sponsor the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Every year, thousands of athletes disappear in clutch moments through the fall in hydration levels. Mm. Get yourself back in the game. Get yourself a Gatorade. Rehydrate, replenish, refuel. Ready to resume action here as the Braves have the football, their deepest field position to start from their own nine. And on first down, a handoff from Allen and a run up the middle to around the 12. Well, for Alcorn right now, it's just a matter of, even though you're early in this ball game, you want to start eating some clock, taking some time, picking up some first downs, and if you have an opportunity to strike again, you will, but you want to be careful back here inside your own 15-yard line. You don't want to have a, have a turnover to give another scoring easy opportunity for Southern. And again, with this lead, the Braves are more than content to just work the play clock down to one. They snap it with six. Allen pressured, coming to his right. And slides at the 15. Yeah, we didn't think we'd be having that type of conversation midway through the second period. Absolutely. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Taking time off the clock. Playing keep away. But that's the situation that Alcorn finds themselves in. And Coach Dooley. Ken, you mentioned this, too. The Jags only give up 14 points a game in conference play. Or more than double that. We still got six and a half to go to the half ends. Well, and then a lot of that is caused by the offense, not playing complementary football. When you have turnovers and you force your defense into negative situations and they're on the field the entire first half, that negates the strength of that defense because they're playing at a tremendous disadvantage. Third and four, Allen throws left. It's caught. Good grab that time by McNair. And he's up to the 30. Akeem McNair had the hiccup that allowed Southern to score. But since then, he's been flawless. Yeah, absolutely. He's had a very good first half here. Nice catch and run. And Alcorn, they have some really talented receivers on the outside. The main thing is protecting Allen in the pocket, and they've done a good job of that so far here in the first half. Movement on the line, a free play for Allen. will air it out to the right, and well short of the intended targets. But this should be offside against Southern. Of course, the broadcaster says should. Doesn't mean it is. <laughs> There's always a discussion, isn't it? Offside. Number 94, defense, five-yard penalty, first down. Well, I'm one for one today as Evan Cotton is called for the jump. Well, if you're Southern here, Ken, how do you refocus yourself? Well, you cannot allow any more points. That's first and foremost. And you want to try and get the football back, give your offense an opportunity to get some points before halftime to try to shift momentum. You may have to try to blitz Allen, try to go for a strip on one of these receivers or tailbacks while they're running the football. You have to force a turnover. Uh, Jacorian Sewell in at running back. Quick throw from Allen to the left side where Hunt catches it. 
He has a score today and makes his way up to the 42. Another first down for the Braves. And again, the quick release of Allen negates any pressure that Southern can get on him. Good route that time, just a little comeback route that time by Hunt. You get that big touchdown early, it forces those defenders to give you a little bit more leeway. Now Southern up in press coverage. Approaching 50 yards today, receiving us on including that one score. A run for Howard, that goes nowhere. That's big. Big guys up front ready to eat. It's Cotton again. Southern with that 7 0 lead. And then the Braves putting up 31 unanswered. Kenan Leachman, free safety, has made some big plays today. Had a strip fumble. It really wasn't fumbled. It was stripped. Last year in this ball game, it was a tight one in Baton Rouge. Southern won it 21 to 17. The Jaguars have won the last two in this contest, winning here in Lorman in 2021. Loss of one on the last play. Allen throws over the middle. Intercepted. This is a play that Southern needed. And that is picked off by Joshua Tate. Yeah, he just dropped back in the coverage. Allen never saw him. And that's the break that the Jaguar defense needed. Force a turnover. Give your offense a short field. See if they can get some points before halftime and get back into this one. Arguably the best field position that Southern has had. Personal foul. Illegal blindside block. Number 40, intercepting team. 15-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. Southern. Well, that ain't going to help the cause, is it, Ken? No, that's going to ruin the great field position that you just got. As for Aaron Allen, only his fourth interception on the season, and we'll see where they end up spotting this football. It would have been at the 34, so this is going to back it up near midfield at the 49-yard line of the Braves, but still pretty good field position for Southern and an opportunity. Both teams with all three of their timeouts. Alongside Ken Moore and Jason Metko. Great to have you with us here on this Saturday, the first Saturday of November. All right, so Southern will have it from basically midfield. The previous play is under video review for a possible targeting. Ah. All right, so we'll check this out. But we will take the break first and then give you the verdict. Well, the officials will. We'll all do it together. It's under four to play. And the Braves are flying high on a Saturday. I got the deal for your husband. iPhone 15 Pro. Carolers. To tell me you want a new iPhone? A better plan's Verizon. No way they take this break. Yes, they will. And you'll get iPhone 15 Pro and Apple TV 4K and Apple One. All three on them. Do that. We tried to tell him, but he paid us a lot. It was a lie. This holiday, turn any iPhone in any condition into a new iPhone 15 Pro with titanium, Apple TV 4K, and six months of Apple One. All three on us. It's holiday every day with Verizon. This is Carl. He never really thought much of his credit scores. Well, until he got Credit Karma and used his scores to move on up. By putting in the work to improve his scores, he got access to a better credit card. And that sofa she liked. Ooh, is that Saffron Sunrise? And when it came time to buy a home of his own, Credit Karma helped him take things to the next level. Just in time. Into it, Credit Karma. Download the money app where your hard work pays off. NFL football, Little Caesars, and my lucky chair. I'm not changing anything. Morning, girl. Morning, trash. Yeah. Good night, honey. Good night. Then over here with the gross premium market. Yeah, questions? George Kittle, what keeps you going all season long? Little Caesars Pizza, and of course my guy Daryl and his lucky chair. Yes! 
Do you hear that, Susan? That's because of the chair. Daryl gets it. He knows the four-quarter calzone from Little Caesars is officially delicious. Pizza. New Ziploc Stay Open Design. The only bag with a fold line and patented stand-up bottom. So you can fill it up, zip, and parent. Unlock a second set of hands. Unlock life. SC Johnson. What does dry skin feel like? It was really scaly. Like a pet lizard. New Dove Body Wash with Microbiome Nutrient Serum transforms the driest skin in one shower. I feel amazing. I feel like put on really good dress. Your skin's full of life again. <laughs> New Dove Body Wash. So we are looking at targeting call here. Possible targeting by David uh, Delvin Cotton as he comes in on Allen. And then the interception happens. If this is targeting, it would wipe out the interception. Let's see if there's another infraction because they say there was a blindside block as well, which we don't see footage of. Looks like the tackle on the hit on Allen is clean. I didn't see any hit to the head. So here comes the vert. <laughs> this is a big call in this game. This is. This turnover is wiped out by the Jaguars. See the hit on Allen. All right, here we go. Oh, no, his microphone doesn't seem to be After further right video now. review, the ruling of targeting by number 40 is confirmed. Number 40 is disqualified from the remainder of the contest. So number 40 is Darius Harry, defensive end of Southern. We did not have him on the video to see exactly what he did, but he will be out of the game, 245 pounds, 6'2", junior from New Orleans. So Eric Dooley will be down one of his defensive linemen for the remainder of the game, but his offense has the football at the Brave 49. Yeah, that is the positive, I guess, if you could take one here for Southern, and they'll run it on first down to the left end to around the 41-yard line. It's a run from Kobe Dillon. And Dillon, his second carry of the afternoon. Southern looking to try to put one in here before the end of the half where they scored the first seven points of the game but nothing since Dylan again inside the 40 down to the 38 yeah, before they carry only nine yards rushing for this southern offense so far this afternoon and this is a team on the season that averages 121 yards per game on the ground Fresh set of downs here for Southern. Blood throws left. It's caught. Down the far sideline inside the 30. To the goal line. Touchdown, Southern. They are back in it, Ken. That is Chandler Whitfield's third touchdown of the season. And a big one there. So the Jaguars take advantage of the turnover. Quick pass. Missed tackle. Good block downfield, and then Whitfield takes off down the sideline. Nice cut inside the grain, and 38 yards later, the Jaguars trying to get back in it, taking advantage of the Aaron Allen interception pass. Joshua Griffin to attempt the point after. Kick is up, and it's good. Southern is not done yet. Chandler Whitfield. And a great ball here from Bloom. And a missed tackle that you saw there from the Braves defensively as Edwin Summerauer could not wrap him up on the initial throw to him. Yeah, a good job by Paul, the big offensive lineman downfield, making a nice block. And that allowed Whitfield to get into the open area. They have to cut back inside, but gets in for six. And the Jaguars are still alive. 
We lost one of the best of all time this week, Bob Knight. Arguably my generation's greatest basketball coach, I'd say. Yeah, he, he was one of the great. Controversial, uh, but successful. And what he did, sixth all-time winning his coach in NCAA history. Coached the last undefeated men's basketball team, 1976. And I remember when he came to Lubbock to take over Texas Tech. That whole community, I think, was shell-shocked originally. We got Bob Knight to come to Lubbock? Yeah. I remember that. That was a great atmosphere that he created there in Lubbock. You see Whitfield on the sideline, and now Aaron Allen trying to shake off that INT that he just threw. Still two minutes and 53 seconds to go here before halftime. We've seen four turnovers in this ball game thus far. 21 points off of those, or excuse me, 28 points off of those turnovers for each team. So the offenses are taking advantage of the mistakes that the other team makes. And anybody out there who thinks that this quarter is over, <laughs> it ain't. Long way to go in this one, folks. Alcor Alcorn will start at their own 25 on first down, Allen. Right side dump off, good catch from Howard past the 30 and pushes his way up to the 34. Howard just getting out into the flat that time. Nice, easy throw for Aaron Allen. It's Howard's second catch today. Both teams with their full complement of timeouts as we go under two and a half minutes. Braves in no rush. Gain of nine, second and one. Dump to the left, a lot of running room here. And Anthony Williams Jr. has a first down for the Braves. Williams Jr., his third reception of the afternoon. Again, just leaking out into the flat. Picking up a nice seven or eight yard gain. Moving the football down the field methodically. Going deep. He's looking for Hunt. Hunt might have been looking for a flag, too, but it looked like that was overthrown from Allen. Well, again, taking a shot into double coverage is Allen. And Kobe Carter coming over from his safety position. Good one-on-one -on -one coverage by Kristen Davis that time of the Jaguars. So now you're in a second and ten situation if you're all corn and Kind of puts you behind the chains a little bit. Each team with all three of their timeouts intact. McNair in motion to the right side here on second down. Allen calls for the ball. They'll throw over the middle, low and incomplete. And some of the Braves fans thinking that was a little bit egregious as Hunt went down and then got hit for good measure. Terry Hunt not too happy about the hit while he was on the ground, but it's going to be third down and 10 for Alcorn. They've been great on third down so far this afternoon, four of five converting third downs, but this is a third and long. This was a little bit different, so we'll see if the Braves can come up with a big third down or if the Jaguar defense can get off the field. Four wide, Allen on third down. Flag comes in. Allen to the 43. Ball came loose, so they're going to call that a fumble? Another flag. I thought Allen was down for sure. I thought he was down, but the official never marked him down, and another Alcorn Brave came in late until the pow. And so this looks to be staying with the Braves. More laundry to sort out for the officials. Well, that first flag that was thrown was in the area of a hold. Mm -hmm. Second one, you got me, Ken. I don't know. Well, I think the official not signaling him down. 
it's still a free-for-all at that point because you're playing through the whistle. There are multiple fouls on the play. Personal foul, illegal hands to the face. Number 28, defense. 15-yard penalty will be added to the end of the run. Automatic first down. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct. Number 28, defense. This 15-yard penalty will also be added. Automatic first down, all court. So Willie Matthews the third called for activity after the whistle. Basically 30 yards and penalties just like that. Number 71, Alcorn, can remain in the game due to the helmet foul. All right. So apparently there was no holding on the play. All of the fouls were against Willie Matthews, the linebacker for Southern. 30 yards and penalties against the Jaguars on that play. And that bails Alcorn out of a fourth down situation where they will be punting the football. Now they are all the way down to the Jaguar 27-yard line. A huge break for the Alcorn Braves offense. Demarcus Gordon had his helmet come off. That's what the penalty was for, grabbing towards the face mask. Great field position here for the Braves, and on first down, a dump to the right side. couple of yards that time for the Braves as we're approaching a minute to go. McNair with the reception. Somebody must have called timeout because the clock is stopped. Or was that incomplete? It was incomplete. And then you see a couple of Jaguars down as well on the field. Timeout on the field. Injury timeout. Looked like it's caught. Maybe cramping up a little bit. We hope that's all it is. The 6'3", 285 grad. Well, this time ago, just last season, I mean, totally different game, I guess you could say, Ken, right? Oh, it, this was a barn burner that went down to the wire last year. I mean, Alcorn dominated the yardage again, 325 yards to 111 for Southern and, and as well as the time of possession over 33 minutes to 26 minutes. We're doing the same thing here this afternoon. The difference is Southern found a way to win that ball game last year at home 21 to 17. So the Jaguars were able to hang around and come back and win that ball game. Passing yards today, 251 to 87 in favor of the hometown Braves. Well, this is the second week in a row that Southern has really been dominated statistically. Um, Texas Southern made a lot of mistakes last week that allowed the Jaguars to come back and win that ball game in overtime. But a step up in competition today here at Alcorn on the reservation in a battle for first place that could decide who plays for the SWAT championship against Florida A&M next month in Atlanta. 64 seconds to go. Second and 10 upcoming for Allen. And his purple team today. Purple, gold, a little bit of white mixed in. Allen will hand off on a draw to Howard. And Howard will move the pile quite a bit. Howard came into this ball game as the leading rusher in the Southwestern Athletic Conference. 534 yards on the season. Averaging over five yards per carry to transfer from Syracuse. Alcorn still with all three timeouts remaining, but choosing not to take one yet. Third and a long one. They are letting a lot of time expire. Give again to Howard. First down. Breaks several tackles. Carrying the pile down to the five. Second effort, third effort, fourth effort for Mr. Howard. Uh, the Braves will take their first time out. Good blocking on that left side. And then once he gets to the second level, he's just hard to bring down. 5'10", 200-pound senior, but he's all muscle. Also had that spinorama move that you hit the X button in on the old Game Boys. Oh, yeah. Make him spin. Good run there from Howard. Big halftime show coming up as both bands are in the house this afternoon. Senior day here at Alcorn. 
Braves fans have packed this place this afternoon. Not sure what's bigger, this game or homecoming. I would say this game may be bigger than homecoming for the 2023 season because this place is absolutely jam-packed. I would say because of everything on the line here, I would surmise that would be the right way of thinking. Both teams, top of the West. As you mentioned, winner of this more than likely going to play in Atlanta. All right, so the Braves have two timeouts remaining, and we're down to 21 seconds to go until the end of the half. On first and goal, delayed draw Howard. Trying to move the pile and maybe a bit of a tush push by one of the linemen. Timeout taken by the Braves. That's their second. Took a time for that clock operator to stop the clock. Looks like time should have been stopped at around 14, 15 seconds. You're at home. You're supposed to get the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> clock operator's got to do a little better job. Now, just heard that there will be more time added. The speak of Ken Moore, and it happens. Make it 15 seconds. Yeah, I thought it should have been stopped at around 15. So that'll give the Braves at least two shots at the end zone. With you know, as long as Allen doesn't take too much time in the pocket, that should leave you time for a field goal. We've had our fair share of miscues today. Yep. McNair fumbled the first part of the ball game that set up the Jaguars' first touchdown. Again, Kendrick Grounds has the football ripped away from him by Keenan Leachman, takes it 27 yards back to the house for the Braves. And then we have Leachman with a pick. Grimes again can't hold on to the football. The old tip drill. Then Aaron Allen returning the favor. Joshua Tate with a pick. On second and four, down to the one. And the Braves will be forced to use their third and final timeout as Macon tried to score six, but was held out of the end zone. The final timeout of the first half. 30-second timeout. All right, Ken, what do you do here? Well, you can't. This really takes the run away from you because you have no more timeouts. So if you run the football and you're stopped, you're not going to have enough time to get the field goal unit onto the field. So it almost forces you into a passing situation for Allen. You may want to roll him out, get him on the run, or you may leave Macon in the ball game since he's a little bit more of a dual threat to have him at the quarterback position, get him outside the pocket and give him the option of throwing or running the football. You just have to be very clear in communication to either of these quarterbacks. You cannot get tackled on this play. If you cannot get into the end zone, throw the football away. Third and goal. It will be Allen. Allen will roll right. Looking for the tight end. Overthrown. He was looking for Griffin. He but had, Hunt looked wide open. He had Monterio Hunt wide open. Watch Monterio Hunt in the slot. Timeout He's going to be wide open injury. to the left of your screen right there. But Allen goes up top to the tight end, and it's incomplete. So that's going to force a field goal situation. Looks like Allen was locked in on the tight end from the jump and did not see Hunt in the slot area. We have Rodney Johnson down. 6'2", 200 junior cornerback. So presumably a field goal attempt here coming from Keani, who's already hit one today from 34. As Johnson slowly rises to his feet, seems to be all right. Another look at the attempted catch here. And you see Johnson go down. That noggin got shaken up a little bit, more than likely. It checked out by the medical staff. Sure enough, a field goal for Keani here. A 19-yard attempt right in the middle of the field. This shouldn't be too difficult. Of course, we say that, we've seen a lot of wild stuff here in the first half. Keani from 19. 
made it. And that is intermission. And the lead is 20 for the Braves. A good all-around first half by Alcorn, forcing a couple of turnovers, going into the break with a 20-point lead in the battle for first place. 24-14, Alcorn State leads Southern. Halftime coming up right after this on ESPN. Alcorn State leading by 20 here at intermission, 34-14. Jason Metko alongside Ken Jones. A very dynamic first half, I would say, Ken. It has been a tremendous first half thus far. If you're an Alcorn State fan, down 7-zip early in this ball game, a little shaky start, but then your team comes back with 31 unanswered points. Southern gets a turnover near the end of the first half on the interception by Joshua Tate. That set up a touchdown catch by Whitfield, 38 yards. Got them back in at 31-14. But a nice drive by Alcorn at the end of the half 
12 play 74 yard drive for the field goal that's where we are right now 34 14. well let's now listen to the all corn band when we come back right after this on espn Back at halftime, 20-point lead for the hometown team. Let's tune in now to the Human Jukebox. Halftime performance brought to you by Pepsi.
has been fun. Alcorn with a 20-point lead. Back to the field we go. This time, it's the Sounds of Dynamite, presented by Pepsi.
We've got 48 points on the board. A lot of highlights here, Ken. Yeah, Kendrick Grimes taking it in. First one yard out. Touchdown. Jaguars go up early. Seven zip. But then Aaron Allen on top. Ontario Hunt. 35-yard strike. Braves went up 10-7 at that point. Then the fun began. Leachman rips it away from Rhymes, takes it 27 yards to the house. Braves lead it 17-7 at that point. Then a little juggling at by Malik Rogers. He takes it in from eight yards out. 24 unanswered for the Braves, but they weren't done. Griffin, 52 yards, rumbling, bumbling, stumbling into the end zone. 31-7 Braves at that point after an Aaron Allen interception. Whitfield takes it 38 yards to the crib. 31-14, Jags trying to get back in it. Alcorn with a late field goal. They lead it at the break by 20. Halftime stats presented by Pepsi, official partner of the Southwestern Athletic Conference. What stands out in your mind there, Ken? Well, look at the passing yardage, the total yardage. 340 to 118 for the Braves. Time of possession also huge in this ball game. Nearly 19 minutes for Alcorn, doubling up the time of possession for Southern, and that's kind of what happened to the Jaguars last week against Texas Southern. The SWAC scoreboard presented by Pepsi, official partner of the Southwestern Athletic Conference. And we thought we had points. Look at the points down in Alabama A&M, Florida. A&M, the Rattlers, continue to roll, leading by 21 over Alabama A&M. Texas Southern, the aforementioned Tigers losing to Jackson State 21-7. Prairie View homecoming on the hill as they lead Arkansas Pine Bluff 24-zip and Grambling and Alabama State about to get underway shortly. Very busy day in the SWAC. We're about ready to start the second half, but first some SWAC news and notes brought to you by GM. Well, volleyball season is here. Jackson State dominating. Alexis Williams, Hope Briggs, and Jordan Jones along with Prairie View's Leah Lawson, all honored for their impressive performances during the past week. The SWAC side of football had Jackson State's Jacoby and Morgan and Leiani Armenta, along with Grambling's Sonny Anderson and Alabama A&M's Eamon Scarborough, the SWAC football players of the week. And HBCU history, Leanna Armenta, the first woman in HBCU history to score in a game. She had three extra points last week for Jackson State against Arkansas Pine Bluff, so congratulations to that young lady. Ready to start half number two, and Southern will kick away here. Alongside Ken Moore, Jason Metko. Great to have you with us, and a fair catch on a kick called that time. Anthony Williams Jr. was not going to let the demons of the first half for both sides on him there. Well, Coach Fred McNair, I'm sure that was the instruction at halftime. Fair catch the football. We have a 20-point lead. We don't need any more mistakes. Both teams with two turnovers in the first half. Both teams converting those turnovers into 14 points respectively. Aaron Allen bringing his offense back out on the field. They passed for 251 yards in that first half and he spread the football around to an array of receivers. Six Braves caught passes in the first half. Start this drive from the 25. And Allen on first down will drop back and throw left where it is caught around the 28-yard line. Good grab there from Ontario Hunt, who had a score in the first half. And Allen has had success throwing in the flat, throwing to the outside near the numbers. Passes in the middle of the field, middle of the field, have been somewhat treacherous. We saw that interception by Joshua Tate in the middle of the field. So Alcorn is like to work the flats and the outside spread out this Southern defense. I feel like Southern needs a stop here if they want to keep on making this a close game. But now we've got flags and a false start that will help Southern's cause. They'll take that five-yard penalty. You're already down 20. Can't afford to go down 27. Well, penalties can be drive stoppers because it gets you behind the chains and really throws you off of your offensive rhythm. So now you had a nice first down play. It was second down and six. Now you're behind the chain, second and 11, and that changes completely what you want to do and can do offensively. Allen sends a man in motion to the near side. 
on second and 11. Aaron feeling the rush, and he's brought back down inside the 10. There's Joshua Tate stepping up again. Again, they run a little game this time. You see Tate coming from the outside on a delayed blitz. They bring five, and they finally get to Aaron Allen. First sack of the afternoon by that Jaguar defense. If you're Aaron Allen, you just got to throw that football away. No need to take a sack. Now you're all the way back inside your own 15-yard line, third and 26. Allen will run a draw play. And trying to pick up some of the yardage back is Howard. But it will be a punt upcoming for the Braves. So a couple of mistakes by Alcorn on that drive. First the five-yard penalty, then the quarterback taking a big sack. And that's going to force a fourth down punting situation. Caleb Darbone will come in and putt, but first an injury here. And we'll see who the injured Brave is once we can get a better look. Alongside Ken Moore, Jason Metka with you here today. We talk about Aaron Allen. He's had a good afternoon so far, except for that one interception. And you look at the upcoming schedule, next week is going to be huge. Rambling, they'll be on the road against Arkansas Pine Bluff. That game will be on Friday. And then coming up on Saturday, a huge slate, the big one, Prairie View and Southern. That game will have a huge impact on the SWAC West. Also, Alcorn will travel to Texas Southern as well. So those are going to be the huge ball games on the docket next week. The injured player for the Braves is back on his feet. Being helped off. Punt here now. And Caleb Darbone will come in and do the punting duty, standing at his own five. Jags have a man back. That's Whitfield. And not the best attempt there. Momentum has swung to Southern very early on in this second half, Ken. Well, these are the mistakes that you don't want to have coming out of the locker room if you're all caught. You have a penalty, you take a sack, now you got a shank punt up to the 32-yard line, and this one just off the side of his foot. Excellent field position for Southern. So Eric Dooley's bunch tries to regroup and come back here, down 20 points. Harold Blood, the quarterback. Kendrick rhymes the tailback to the right. They go trips right and four wide on first down. Blood with a draw play. A couple of outs picked up there. Kobe Dillon. Dillon, this will be his fourth carry of the afternoon. Had three carries for 33 yards in the first half. Kendrick Rhymes, five carries for 12 yards. So they've shared the running duties here so far this afternoon. It's a gain of three for Dillon. No urgency here from Southern. They'll take their time. Blood on second down. Throws over the middle. It's caught. Hauled in by Jalen Howard. 12 catches, 160 yards coming into this one. Nice play on second down, sets up a third and short. Blood, clean pocket, nice easy throw across the middle. One yard to go here for Southern. Jaguars with two of six on third down conversions in the first half. Blood still out of the gun. He'll give to Dillon, who was stuffed up. There's Malachi Bailey coming over from the defensive end position to make the stop. Yeah, Bailey crashing down from that defensive end position. And it's going to be fourth down now for the Jaguars. They're going to have to keep the offense on the field. Dillon could not pick it up. 
You go for it here? Absolutely. You have no choice. Biggest play of the game. Fourth and two. A long two at that. Looks like the sticks are around the 22 here. Alcorn fans on their feet. A draw play. Second effort. Was it enough? It was. There's Lampton who picks up a key first down to keep the drive going. And a bit of an altercation afterwards as Fields is being held back. Oh my goodness, you cannot afford to lose your cool in these type of games, in this type of situation. Your offense just picked up a critical fourth down Fields is going to come off the field. He's pointing to his helmet. Officials having a discussion now. Braves are applauding. There are multiple flags back at the 15 here. Now it depends on if it's a post-play foul after the play. Sportsmanlike on Southern. Injection. Oh my goodness. So we, we apologize. We lost the official's mic, but it appears that Fields has been ejected from the ball game. He's the starting left tackle. Now the left guard, Travian Newsom, is unpleased as well. Let's see if we can see what happened. You see Field 78, he knocks over Taylor. Then he gets into it with 27 at the top of the screen. And that's all we have. But apparently he's gone. It was after the run. So it does remain first down for Southern. 6'5 junior from Linden, New Jersey. But he is a critical piece of that offensive line. The starting left tackle, he protects the blind side of Harold Blood. I'm just going to say, if Blood was a lefty, it would not matter as much. But the fact that Blood throws right-handed, that blind side does come into play. So it will be first and ten now for Southern. He's going to back the football up around the 36-yard line of Alcorn. Officials still trying to sort this out as this game has come to a screeching halt. It was like a NASCAR race in the first quarter with action just going back and forth down the field. Now we've popped a couple of tires. It will be a first down for Southern. Coach Eric Dooley now trying to figure out what to do at that left tackle position. Jaden Rogers, the freshman, is listed on the depth chart as the backup left tackle. Let's see if that's who it is. Looks like Mitchell, 74, is going to be in at that left tackle position. He's a junior from Durant, Mississippi. I knew there was a Durant, Oklahoma, but not a Durant, Mississippi. We were talking about Tallahassee earlier. The only Durant's I know are Kevin. <laughs> Blood wide open right side of the 20. Caught and then taken down back at the 22. There's Howard with a good grab. Good throw that time by Blood. Wide open receiver. All point given a lot of cushion there in the secondary and blood able to take advantage of it. First and ten, do it again for Southern. And now more whistles. And Eric Dooley is several paces on the field. My goodness. These are the type of things that slow down the games more times than not that really have to get cleaned up. 
Coach Dooley with an inquisitive look upon his face. And I think maybe one of the issues is the lack of communication because the referee's mic is not working. We see Phil still there on the sideline with his helmet. Yeah, he's been ejected. Picked up his second personal foul. Not sure what the discussion was about. It was a big completion for Southern and a first down. Play clock is rolling once again. Under 10 to go in a very strange third quarter. Dillon is the tailback to the right of Blood on first and 10. Just outside the red zone. And to Kobe. Good second effort inside the 20 down to around the 18. Kobe's played well today. Yeah, Kobe Dillon's had a nice afternoon. Getting most of the carries after that fumble and that drop pass by Kendrick Rhymes in the first half. Picked up five after all that. Southern still on a 20-point hole, at least for now. On second down, they'll give it to Dillon again. And picked up a couple. But that all-corner defensive front, led by Smith, was really doing a nice job not giving up the big running plays, not allowing the big last plays. That was Devin Dawson, my mistake, making the tackle that time. From Little Elm, Texas. Where Little Elm is. From the Dallas-Fort Worth area. And it is a small town by area, not so much population. A big third down here, Ken. See what blood and the offense have in store. Harold will drop back. Uh -oh. Rush is on, sacked. Guess what? It comes from where? The left side. Left side of the offensive line breaks down. Malachi Bailey able to take advantage. 6'2", 260 junior. Dylan tried to cut block, and he just stepped right over him. And so now it forces a possible field goal situation for Southern. And this kid, <laughs> talk about a leg, Joshua Griffin. He drilled a 53-yarder last week against Texas Southern to get that game into overtime. This from 42. Bo plan the punter is the holder. But first, a timeout. And we will take the break alongside the timeout. Field goal time coming up after this on ESPN. For years, thousands of athletes disappear in clutch moments through the falling hydration levels. Get yourself back in the game. Get yourself a Gatorade. Rehydrate, replenish, refuel. We are exactly what you think. We are not at all what you think. We are past, present, and future. All in one. Because the best way to honor our history Make history. General Motors, honored to sponsor the Southwestern Athletic Conference. HBCUs are anchored by legacy. They nurture the talent and determination of their students and prepare them for a bright future. The Home Depot's Retool Your School program has and still believes in the excellence of HBCUs. Committed not just in speech, but through the revitalization and upgrades of the campuses these students call home. Building, planting, tilling the dream, all hearts and countless volunteers on the ground. Retool your school. We're powered by purpose. Every year, thousands of athletes disappear in clutch moments through the falling hydration levels. Mm. Get yourself back in the game. Get yourself a Gatorade. Rehydrate, replenish, refuel. When you join the HBCU family, you become part of the tradition of breaking barriers in your community, breaking ground in your career, 
and bringing it with everything you do. From how you look to how you move in the classroom, on the court, and on the field. That's why Academy Sports and Outdoors is proud to celebrate the HBCU legacy and all those to add to it in their own way. A 42-yard field goal made by Joshua Griffin cuts the deficit down to 17. Mentioned last week he made one from 54, Ken. Yeah, this was a chip shot. <laughs> Jaguars after the uh, shank punt, only able to come away with three. So Alcorn still with a three possession lead, seven and a half minutes to go here, third quarter. Again, both of these ball clubs come in riding Hot Street Southern, winners of three in a row, five of their last six. Alcorn winner of four in a row. Coach Fred McNair looking for his third SWAC championship. Won titles in 2018 and 19 when the Braves were in the East Division. Southern was in the SWAT Championship game a couple of years ago. Well, actually last year against Jackson State and lost that game to Jackson State. So they are looking for a repeat appearance. So the winner this afternoon will take over sole possession of first place in the West. Both teams will have two ball games remaining. Alcorn will be on the road for their final two games of the year and two tough ones. They'll travel to Texas Southern next week and finish the season at Jackson State. And game Texas Southern as we see Southern going here. Maybe there was a penalty that wiped out the field goal. A tip towards the end zone incomplete. Pass was intended for Ed McGee. So they took the field goal off the board. And there must have been a penalty because Southern has excellent field position resuming this drive here. So it remains a 20-point deficit, and Southern wants more than just the three that they have. Blood with the snap. Oh! Picked off! Leachman! Have a game, young man. Six more for Alcorn. Unbelievable afternoon for Keenan Leachman. A fumble strip for a touchdown, an interception, and now he picks off Harold Blood at the night at the 10 yard line and this will be a 90 yard house call for the young man out of Baton Rouge <laughs> how about that southern probably thinking we could have had this kid <laughs> oh my goodness talking about doing it into your hometown school 90 yards to the house and that flips this ball game on his head. Southern looked like they were going in for six. The field goal taken off the board because of a penalty. And instead of having three in a 17-point deficit, now all of a sudden Alcorn has blown this one wide open. That might be game call right there. Talk about a momentum swing. PAT play was whistled dead before they could run it. So Keani will try to make this an Alcorn lead of 41 to 14. Leachman's had a game. We mentioned he had a pick. He also had a strip ball that never hit the ground. He just stripped it from the running back and ran it in for six. PAT from Keani is good. One more look. Have a day, Leachman. 90 yards to Paydirt, and it is all Braves here in the third. Carolers, to tell me you want a new iPhone, a better plan's Verizon. No way they take this break. Yes, they will, and you'll get 
iPhone 15 Pro and Apple TV 4K and Apple One, all three on them. Do that. We tried to tell him, but he paid us a lot. It was a lot. This holiday, turn any iPhone in any condition into a new iPhone 15 Pro with titanium, Apple TV 4K, and six months of Apple One. All three on us. It's holiday every day with Verizon. Mom, can we go to the movies? Not now, sweetie. How are we ever going to find a car to fit our budget? And it fits all of us. Carvana. I don't want to spend more than 30K. Budget? I want something we can go camping in. Style? You like heated seats. And you like singing at stoplights. Premium sound. And we, and we both, both need parking, parking assist. assist. Here. I'll meet you outside. Bring your purse. Carvana. Our kid's a genius. How do we get it? They deliver! Oh, oh, all right, let's go. <laughs> Buy your car the easy way with Carvana. For over six decades, Blaine's Farm and Fleet's Toyland has made wishes come true for everyone. Now through Wednesday, we're celebrating with great gifts at great prices throughout the store. Like these personal care holiday gift sets starting at $9.99. Half off this four-piece cast iron skillet set. And bluey talking plush toys or convertible play sets just $17.99. Plus, donate new unwrapped toys to kids helping kids and we'll match gifts up to $250,000. Blaine's Farm and Fleet's Toyland, where wishes come true for everyone. What if your entire day glided like Dove Men? It's made with a plant-based moisturizer and glides on without irritation. So you can glide through your entire day with confidence. Feel the Dove Men glide. Kate Hare has been a little stressed out about her holiday to-dos. But you don't need more tinsel, Kate. You need Shutterfly. Shutterfly makes it easy to create a holiday card that pops with options like double-thick card stuff, How quickly the tide turns. Southern had three on the board. An Alcorn penalty wiped it off. The Jags tried to score for six. But Mr. Leachman has two scores today, courtesy this time of a 90-yard pick six. Well, he's accounted for as many points as the Southern offense this afternoon. He has two touchdowns, and the Jaguar offense has two touchdowns, and not as... That is not a recipe for success if you're a Jaguar Nation. And right now they trail this one big, 41-14. Good news is they still have a lot of time left in this ballgame. Still over seven minutes to go here in the third. Oh, a leveling hit up to the 21-yard line. This Braves defense and special teams, they've been knocking some players today. So we see the compare and contrast between the quarterbacks. Yeah, well, Aaron Allen, he's a candidate for Offensive Player of the Year. 255 yards this afternoon, touch, two touchdowns. Harold Blood, another struggling afternoon for the Jaguar quarterback, only four of nine for 87 yards, one touchdown, and the pick six the other way for the Alcorn Braves. So if you are Southern, you got to reset your mind and focus. And they will start this drive from their own 21. Blood will swing it right. Far sideline around the 30. There's Rhymes, who we really have not seen since, I want to say, midway through the second quarter, Kim? Yeah, been a struggle for Kendrick Rhymes this afternoon. caught in a bit of defensive confusion. Someone wants to run a little bit of tempo. On the ground, past the 30, to around the 37. Well, you're going to see Alcorn in their two deep coverage now, which is going to invite Southern to run the football. They'll let them run the football. But we have a hole that will bring it back 10, if that run from Rhymes. So it looks like every time the Jaguars take two steps forward, they take one step backwards, and this will wipe, wipe out a nice run by Rhymes. But as I was mentioning, Alcorn's going to be in this two deep coverage now where they're not going to allow anything over their head. They're going to force everything underneath if Southern wants to throw the football or invite them to run the football. Main objective for Alcorn now is not to give up any big plays, allow Southern to eat up as much clock as they want to. 
Second and long. Blood. Right side almost intercepted again. That was not Leachman that time, though. That was Robert McDaniel who was thinking maybe a pick six of his own. Late throw to the outside that time by Blood. Him and the receivers just not on the same page here so far in the second half. Third and 13. I hear that loud horn. Sounds like the hailing sign of a Star Destroyer from Star Wars. Playing the minds of Southern all afternoon long. And now on third and 13, trying to go into triple coverage on the right side. Incomplete looking for Darren Morris. And it is a very quick three and out for the Jaguars. I think not what you need when you trail big in this ball game. Get a lot of credit to this all point defense. They have done a tremendous job this afternoon. Third in the swack in total defense. It comes to points allowed per game. They allow 15. Today, 14. No plan to punt it away. A rush on, and there was almost a block. And a fair catch called by the Braves with 6.10 to go. Third quarter, and Alcorn flying high on this sunny set. Doritos created Solid Black in 2021 to help fuel the initiatives of black leaders seeking to drive real change. And this year, Dorito Solid Black is welcoming 16 new change makers to the program. We are Solid Black. Huge play coming up. Oh, wait. I can't Talking about dropping the ball. I got the score. Not not the the to Steven's Hardy Dippers. We are exactly what you think. We are not at all what you think. We are past, present, and future. All in one. Because the best way to honor our history is to make history. General Motors, honored to sponsor the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Every year, thousands of athletes disappear in clutch moments through the fall in hydration levels. Get yourself back in the game. Get yourself a Gatorade. Rehydrate, replenish, refuel. HBCUs are anchored by legacy. They nurture the talent and determination of their students and prepare them for a bright future. The Home Depot's Retool Your School program has and still believes in the excellence of HBCUs. Committed not just in speech, but through the revitalization and upgrades of the campuses these students call home. Building, planting, tilling the dream, all hearts and countless volunteers on the ground. Retool your school. We're powered by purpose. Every year, thousands of athletes disappear in clutch moments through the fall in hydration levels. <laughs> Get yourself back in the game. Get yourself a Gatorade. Rehydrate, replenish, refuel. All corn up by 30. Battle of the two best teams in the West in the SWAC. It's been all the home team. Jason Metco alongside Ken Moore. Bit surprised by this score, Ken? I'm very surprised. I expected a tight ball game this afternoon, but the many mistakes by this Jaguar team has allowed Alcorn to open it up here midway through the third quarter. And Howard will inch towards the 50 on a good run on first down. And at this point, Alcorn can just do that all day. Yeah, 27-point lead. I mean, four scores needed for Southern. And as we mentioned, you know, midway through the second quarter, it's all about just taking care of the football, trying to stack first downs, and try to eat up some of this second-half clock. Rodgers in motion to the slot left. 
Allen, delayed draw again. Howard with an open seam in two and three. Another first down. But no one seemingly on the right side of that Jaguar defense, left side of the offense, just a huge hole. No one there. You, right. could run, you could run through that, Ken. I, I still got a little speed left. <laughs> I'm a slide, though. I'm not going to get hit. <laughs> Play it safe. It's good. Put one of those red jackets on me that they put on the quarterbacks in practice. Red jersey. Under five to go in the third. They'll run it again with Howard. To around the 32. So in the first half, we saw the array of offensive runs by all corners. We saw the jet sweep. We saw them bring in the backup quarterback, Macon, to run the zone read. Now with this 27-point lead, you can just give it to your bell cow. Let him run inside the tackles and let him eat up some yardage and eat up some clock. 41 on the board. Final home game of the regular season for the Braves. Allen, hard count. Delayed draw again. This is Sewell. Flag comes in. And we'll see what the laundry is about here. Again, another big hole over that left side. T.J. Yarbrough, Will Ready, the left side of that offensive line for Alcorn. Crashing down. Southern not setting the edge at all. So that will stop the momentum momentarily. I'm not sure if you could rip, rip, read lips there. I'm not sure which number that was, but that'll stall the drive momentarily. Second down and 16 on the way. Penalties have elevated for both ball clubs here in the second half. Southern seven penalties for 90 yards this afternoon. Alcorn six penalties for 57 yards. That penalty will add on to it, so make it seven for 67. Move it back to the 43. And Macon is in the ball game, and he takes the snap and is thrusted back. Yeah, Joshua Tate, he's called his name several times this afternoon. Another big hit. Has an interception today, Tate. Well, for the Braves, at least, this is working a lot of the game clock now. As Macon will come out again. And Allen will resume the quarterback position here. Third and very long. Maybe a draw to Howard. Well, Allen is moving hands and arms. Has the signal that he wants. Sure enough, it's a draw, this time to Sewell. And Corian picks up a few. Be fourth and long, come out. Yeah, and they'll try to punt this football away, try to pin Southern deep inside their own 10-yard line if they can get a good kick. Had a shank on the previous punt. They gave the Jaguars excellent field position, but they were unable to convert it into points, and it ended up being 90 the other way for Alcorn, so... We'll see what happens. Punt's been one of the most exciting plays of the day. You just never know what's going to happen. We have not had anything that could be classified as routine as Whitfield waits back to receive. For Southern, we love a Whitfield return to the house here. There's going to be a delay of game against the Braves and they don't mind it at all. Back it up five yards. This has been quite the adventure. All right, wave it off. That's fine. Coach Eric Dooley said, no, nope, we're going to make you punt it from there. <laughs> <laughs> we're not going to make your job easier by giving you an extra five yards to play with. Southern had a 7-0 lead early, and then Alcorn went on a tear. 
That's a much better punt that time. But it will still roll into the end zone for a touchback. A little more than two to go here in the third. Braves are flying high. Battle of five and three teams. Right now, Alcorn is really situating themselves quite well for a possible SWAC championship appearance in Atlanta. Yeah, yeah they got two road games they have to navigate. Uh, Texas Southern next, next week. And then a huge game against Jackson State to end the season. And that one won't be easy. With a victory today, they would have the tiebreaker and sole possession of first place over Southern. Prairie View and Grambling are also in the mix. Both of those teams are three and two. Prairie View beat Alcorn earlier this year. So if those teams end up in a two-way tie, Prairie View could backdoor their way into a SWAT championship. So still a lot on the line in the SWAC West. Blood wide open over the middle, caught 40 up to the 45-yard line. Best throw of the afternoon by Harold Blood as he hits George Qualls on a deep cross across the middle and a huge game for the Jaguar offense. Now can the Jags keep it going? Well, that's been a problem, right? They get one positive play, and then they come back with something negative, a penalty or a negative play of some sort. They haven't been able to stack first downs, only six first downs, seven first downs now in this game for the Jags. Blood easy throw over the middle. And down inside the 40. The zone coverage gives a lot of room for guys like Qualls to make plays. Well, if Alcorn is going to play this deep zone, then yes, they will eat that up all day. I'm sure the Braves want to play a little zone, but they don't want to give up 20 yards a chunk. Down to a minute to go. And Defense then, shuts the door there. And there's your negative play. Kennedy with the loss of the tackle there. You have two big pass plays, and then you come back to an inside run that goes nowhere. Maybe time for one more play here in the third. Blood feeling the pressure. We'll run it. Good, healthy gain and a first down. Sometimes your QB has to do things like that. Well, Alcorn brings seven. Good job by Blood stepping up in the pocket. Got a nice block. Had a lot of open field to navigate. Good open field tackle. or He could have picked up even more yardage. The third stanza is complete. Southern is trying, but Alcorn with a commanding lead. The fourth and final 15 minutes are coming up. Don't you go anywhere. You're on ESPN.
you go to the fourth. Alcorn with a commanding lead on Southern alongside our MVP today here in the booth, Ken Moore and Jason Metko. Good to have you join us. And for this battle of the two teams that are best in the West, Ken, this has been fairly one-sided. Yeah, it's been surprisingly one-sided. These teams typically play very close contests. Southern has won the last two ball games in this series, winning last year 21-17. to They won here in Lorman two years ago, but it's been all all corn this afternoon. Aaron Allen has had a very nice afternoon at the quarterback position, throwing the football. The defense has been outstanding as well, as well as the special teams unit. So it's been an all-around outstanding performance so far for all three three quarters. Southern, though, is driving here. Down 41 to 14. And Harold Blood will dump it over the middle on first down. Inside the 10 and down to around the nine-yard line. There's Darren Morris, Richard Freshman. Southern doing a little bit of a hurry up here as they see the score is not in their favor. Alcorn defense on this drive has been very lax. A lot of cushion given to these Southern Jaguar receivers. And once again, the Jags inside the red zone. Can they punch it in? Blood will take a low snap. Dump it off over the middle. Lunging towards the three. Still with some life. Good tackle by Andrew Smith, one of the cornerbacks. As Morris brought it in yet again. But another penalty here on Southern. We talked about it all afternoon. Every time they get some momentum, they have a penalty that brings them back. like the Godfather Part 3. Just when I thought I was out, they pull me back in. I never made it to Part 3. You didn't miss much. <laughs> Except that one. But that has been the penalty bug today for some. Without question. And it's been a problem all afternoon long for the, for the Jaguars. So now first and 25. Clock will resume rolling. Blood out of the gun again. Low snap to him. Throws left and incomplete. Timing was off. Looking for Rhymes. Not a lot of plays for second and 25. Try to pick up half of it there. Just try to chop it down and get it manageable for third and fourth down. Speaking of rhymes, he has not had much to verse on today, has he? He has not. The, the beats have not been there. <laughs> the flow has not been there this afternoon for Kendrick. But he has had an outstanding season. A uh, young man has really stepped into his own this year. Fourth best rusher in the entire conference. Second and very long. Blood, low throw. It's caught. To the goal line, in for the touchdown. Is that Whitfield again? No, that's Pete. The tight end. See Pete in the slot. Oh no, he was the outside receiver that time. My bad. And just bad tackling in the secondary by this all point defense. And look, there's still almost 14 minutes to go in this ball game, and the effort on that drive by Alcorn defensively was uh, less than impressive. Yeah, I think Derek Welsh and Deion Robertson, the defensive coordinator, is going to settle the boys down and go, we can't be doing that the rest of this game. PAT good from Josh Griffin. Southern is within 20 in the early fourth quarter. join the HBCU family, you become part of the tradition of breaking barriers in your community, breaking ground in your career, and bringing it with everything you do. From how you look 
to how you move in the classroom, on the court, and on the field. That's why Academy Sports and Outdoors is proud to celebrate the HBCU legacy and all those to add to it in their own way. We are exactly what you think. We are not at all what you think. We are past, present, and future, all in one. Because the best way to honor our history is to make history. General Motors, honored to sponsor the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Doritos created Solid Black in 2021 to help fuel the initiatives of black leaders seeking to drive real change. And this year, Doritos Solid Black is welcoming 16 new change makers to the program. We are Solid Black. Huge play coming up. Talking about dropping the ball. I got the score. Tostitos Hardy Dippers. Well, Southern able to pull within 20. A lot of time left in this fourth quarter, but we are in quarter number four after all. Jason Metco, Ken Moore, and the entire crew. A lot of shadows on the field. Approach the early evening hours. Of course, we lose an hour of daylight or something like that. We gain an hour of sleep. That's it. I'll be nice tonight. Oh, the extra hour? Mm-hmm. Fall fair back. Ca fair catch called, and Corn will have the football one more time. Last drive was pretty good for the... Boys hailing from Baton Rouge. Best drive of the game. Eight plays, 80 yards. Only took three minutes and nine seconds. That's the key to that drive. If you're all corn, you don't mind giving up the 80-yard score, but you don't want it to only take three minutes. So that was a little bit of a disappointment for the all corn Braves. Uh, still nearly 14 minutes to go in this ball game. 20-point game. And look, we've seen swings in this ball game happen quickly. So Alcorn can't sit back and relax. They have to continue to play. Allen on first down will run a draw play. Big hole for Howard. And the starting running back will pick up another first down here for the Braves. Well, that's what you want on first down. Get your big guy involved. Let him go eat. He's had a good afternoon so far. 12 carries, 73 yards before that run. That'll pick up a first down, keep that clock moving. Might as well use the best rusher in the conference if you got him. Big kid, Syracuse transfer. This is a kid that Coach Fred McNair tried to recruit out of high school, had an offer from Syracuse, decided to go up to the Big East. Things did not work out there. He had a good career there, but got a little homesick, wanted to come back home reached out to Coach McNair, and you see him rumbling again. Mr. Howard having a quarter. Again, it's been that left side. You see Southern defense just going inside. No one staying outside to protect the edge. I don't understand what they're doing defensively, and that's leaving wide open running lanes off left tackle for huge gains. Got Derek Williams down for the Jags, weak side linebacker. And we will take a timeout with just under 13 to go in regulation.
20 point advantage remains for Alcorn. Jason Metko and Ken Moore with you on this Saturday. And the Braves at this point just trying to close things out. Well, they've done a great job. Got to give a lot of credit to that offensive line, particularly that left side of T.J. Yarbrough and Will Reddy. They have really contained the defensive ends of Southern this afternoon. Coming into the ball game, we talked about Kelby Givens and Todd Brown. 23 and a half tackles for loss on the season between those two guys. So far this afternoon, Givens with five tackles. We don't see Taj Brown name in the book. Howard goes nowhere. Speaking of Givens, there he is making a tackle right on cue. So he comes flying in from that left defensive end position to make the stop. And so it's going to be second down and long now for Alcorn. And you look at the rushing yardage, total domination by the Braves this afternoon and passing yardage as well in favor of Alcorn State. We've seen Southern try to run it with Rhymes today, and Dillon just hasn't been there. 412 total yards of offense for this Alcorn Brave attack. Under 12 to go. They'll feed Howard one more time. And the transfer from Syracuse takes it down to the 27. And they continue to go over that left side. Look, if, if they're not going to stop it, you keep going that way. So now it's going to be third down and short. Much more manageable third down. Now this would be a statement win here for the Braves. Mentioned that contest coming up next week. That'll be a fun one. Yeah, that game will be next Sunday. And that is because the stadium is potentially being used for a MLS soccer match for the Houston Dynamo. Howard again. And speaking about that matchup between Alcorn State and Texas Southern next week, looks like a Sunday afternoon affair in Houston. Howard able to pick enough there and has a first down. So they recover from the second and 13. Two nice running plays again off that left side. And the Jaguars just have not made the defensive adjustment. Fresh set of downs. And everybody in purple looks towards the near side. One more time to Howard. And maybe got one. And tempers are still mighty hot down there. And the helmet comes off again. Monroe that time lost his helmet. Second down for the break. Officially no gain. No, there was a yard. I thought there was a yard. Good job that time. Good penetration that time from the right side of the defense by, by Southern to get into the backfield and stop it for a short gain, and the Jaguars are going to take a timeout. So Southern takes the timeout. We'll take it with them. 20-point advantage for Alcorn State on this Saturday. It's only a 30 second break, so we won't go anywhere. That's the Texas Southern game that Alcorn will be in Houston for. And a beautiful facility, now known as Shell Energy Stadium, east side of downtown. with the six and three mark. Javion Howard this afternoon, 17 carries, 129 yards to add to his swag leading total. 
So we resume action after the second Southern timeout. Allen and Howard in the backfield. Feed Howard. Pinballing off a tackler. Still going. Now the whistle blows as forward progress stops him at the top. It's a hard man to bring down, isn't he? <laughs> he is a tough hombre. Stands at 5'10", 200. Yeah, I think he's a little bit too heavy. <laughs> yeah. Those biceps look more than 200 on their own. I think now. he's had a little muscle since the uh, since the depth charts were printed. <laughs> kind of like how Tom Brady looked in his combine photo. Mm -hmm. Real skinny and scrawny, and then you see him on the field going, oh, wait, how is that the same guy? Exactly, exactly. The third down here. Five yards to go for the Braves, leading by 20. Allen will throw it right. And down to around the 20-yard line. Good job by Tate once again, 32. He's been all over the football field. He's been the best defender for Southern this afternoon. Read that play perfectly, stopped it for a short game. And so now we'll see if the Braves will bring on the field goal unit as they try to extend this out. Darius Adams with the catch, and Noah Kiani will come on. Where he has made a 34-yard field goal today. This will be a little bit further than that. Approximately 37 yards. And the play clock might run down here. Uh, that's right. For some reason. Now she starts going. The kick from Kehani is good. He's two for two today on field goal attempts. And Alcorn State has made it a 44 21 lead on senior day. Back with more after this on ESPN. Alcorn padding the lead a little bit more, courtesy of a field goal from Noah Kiani. He has two of those today, two for two. Nine play drive that covered 55 yards and ate a little bit of the clock. Kickoff away, fielded around the 13. And up to around the 27. Okay. 
SWAC Football on ESPN is presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors, official sporting goods and outdoor retailer of the SWAC. Pump, proud sponsor of the SWAC. And by Nike. Well, Ken Moore, one-sided affair today with Alcorn looking good in all three phases. Yeah, they looked outstanding so far here this afternoon. Started off a little bit shaky with the fumble by McNair on the first punt return of the afternoon. Set up the early score by Southern, but then they went on 31 unanswered against the Jaguars, forcing a couple of turnovers. Big afternoon by Leachman. Three turnovers on the afternoon for that young man. Really turned the tide in this ball game. Southern has tried to make some headway, but every time they take a step forward, they take one step backwards with penalties or turnovers. Blood will throw into the direct sunshine, and the pass is caught. That catch made by Dillon. Well, Ken, you speak prophetically yet again. Well, Holding will bring it back after that. That'll be the ninth penalty against Southern this afternoon. Over 100 yards in penalties for the Jaguars. And just something you did not expect from an Eric Dooley coach team. The biggest game of the year to this point for Southern. I mean, it's something if it's the first game of the season, but we're in November now. Blood on first and 20 will dump it to the left side. And Rhymes picked up a couple. You know, and Coach Fred been there in our discussion this week, you know, when I asked him about one of the keys to the game, and he said it was taking their running back away. Kendrick Rhymes, you have to take him away, make this team one-dimensional, and Alcorn has done a great job of that this afternoon. Rhymes only nine yards rushing today. Only 50 yards as a team for seven. So they've done their job. They've made them one dimension. Dillon has 39 of those yards. Second down and 20 yards to go. Blood again will air it out deep over the middle, and it's picked. That was too easy. Trying to go there over the middle, but Edwin Summerhour says thank you very much. The blood, little pressure in the pocket, not much, and just overthrows his receiver by five yards, and that was as easy as a punt. Turnovers are racking up here for the Braves today. Third interception of the afternoon for Harold Blood. He's also been sacked five times. So it's been a long afternoon for the Jaguar quarterback. Allen and the offense coming back out. First down run, Sewell. Up to around the 44. William Sewell had a big touchdown run last week in their win against Mississippi Valley, 62 yards. Get the uh, carries here to try to close this one out for all point. No problem working the clock all the way down. For Southern, they'll have another big one next week. They'll go back home. They'll take on Prairie View, which will be basically an elimination game as the loser of that game next week will be out of the playoff picture with the championship picture in the West. So that will be an elimination game next week between Southern and Prairie View. That game will be in Baton Rouge at 2 o'clock Another good Saturday. Health, another good healthy game by Sewell moves the sticks again. Lots to celebrate if you're wearing purple today. 
But look, it was a lot of it was a lot of tailgating, a lot of a lot of partying last night, a lot of tailgating this morning before the game, and best believe there'll be a lot of tailgating and celebrations tonight for the fans. The players will likely get to celebrate for about 24 hours, and then they'll turn their attention to Texas Southern for next week. But it's been a heck of a ball game for Alcorn State this afternoon. They put it all together, and this is the best chance that Coach Fred McNair and his bunch have had to get back to a championship game since they switched from the East Division to the West Division when Bethune-Cookman and Florida A&M joined the conference a couple of years ago. Three-yard gain that time for Sewell. We're under five to go now. Sun has basically ventured its way off the field here. Again, Sewell. And maybe lost a yard. And still a little bit of tempers between these two teams. You've got to give Alcorn a lot of a lot of uh, praise. They've kept their composure uh, for the majority of the ball game. They haven't had any, you know, unsportsmanlike fouls or disqualifications. Of course, we saw the left tackle fields get ejected for um, Southern. That was a big loss for them. One of the leaders of that offensive line. When you're already down in the ball game. Under four left now. Feed Sewell again. Why not? Trying to find that yard. And Sewell remaining on his feet. Didn't want to go down. No. <laughs> we really haven't seen anyone really be able to bring Howard down at times either. No. They've done a great job on that ground game. And they've had a nice balanced attack. And you know, 186 yards on the ground, 255 through the air. And that's something Coach McNair talked about as well. He wanted to have a balanced attack. So really, Alcorn succeeded in all their goals this afternoon. Alcorn will go to six and three. Southern to fall to five and four. Just a couple more weeks to go in this college football season. And it has flown by. I can't believe it's already 1st of November. And we're starting to talk about bowl talk and FCS competition. And Alcorn uses their first time out. Player of the game brought to you by Gatorade. I think this is an easy call, Ken. Keenan. Leachman, a 5'9 grad student out of Baton Rouge, doing it against his hometown team. You see the strip there? It's Kendrick Rhines in the 90 yard pick six, takes it to the house. Two interceptions, one fumble recovery, two touchdowns. Keenan Leachman, the Gatorade player of the game. This afternoon, basically a perfect example of how Alcorn played today. Yeah, they came out with a plan, and they stuck to it. And even when they got down early and they were struggling, they stayed steadfast in what their job was. Whitfield back to receive a punt that will never make it to him. Down at the 18. 2.36 to go. Leachman and the boys in purple have a lot to celebrate for that 24-hour window before they need to focus on Texas Southern next week. Yep, he's after the over. Get some of the backups into the ball game for the final couple of minutes. And Coach Eric Dooley will be a long ride home to Baton Rouge tonight. But still a lot to play for. Still got two weeks. Still got two big ball games. And again... It'll be an elimination Saturday next week between them and Prairie View. Prairie View all over Arkansas Pine Bluff in their homecoming this afternoon. They lead that ball game 38-14 late in the fourth quarter. Jackson State looks like they're going to hold on against TSU. 
New quarterback into the game is Dylan Mayrotra. He's a 6'3", 190 sophomore from Baton Rouge, and the first pass is knocked down. A good penetration that time, getting in with the big paw. Looks like Kayvon Henderson. Quickly second down for Southern. 6'3", freshman, making a play. And Rocher goes out of the gun. And they'll keep it on the ground. First down and more. We see, as Ken mentioned, several of the backups coming in on both sides. As rhymes, though, carrying it. He ain't going out yet. Tailback out of the Heights High School in the greater Houston area. First down. Quarterback run. Ball's out. Picked up by the Braves. And rumbling and stumbling is Cullen Scott. The D tackle. And that should pretty much do it, Ken. Well, it's been done. This might be the icing on the cake. Not sure if the ground, ground caused the fumble there, but the big fella picking it up and taking it the other way. Cullen Scott, junior out of Rosedale, Louisiana. And for now, it's a fumble recovery for Alcorn. Now, every turnover is reviewable. That would be the fourth turnover of the afternoon for the Southern offense if it stands. And it appears that it is going to stand. As we will see the offense come on here. At least Alcorn's offense is going out there. Alcorn came into this game plus 10 in turnover differential this season. They have been ball hawks the entire year. And they've won the turnover battle here today. So it will remain Braves football with a minute 50 to go. When you're down 44-21. Standings. And looks, I mean, that's hard to believe that both teams, 4-1, 5-3 and and overall, because this game was not that. Yeah, absolutely. All point dominated today. So they'll go to 5-1 and one in conference play. Southern will fall to 4-2. For those of you winning this afternoon, they will go to 4-2 and two as well. Rambling playing right now. We'll see what the outcome of that ball game is. But Southern and Prairie View play next week. That will be an elimination game. The winner will be out. The winner will still be alive. Rambling may have to keep winning. They have an opportunity. On the east side, Florida AM already has it sewn up. They will take a trip to the SWAT championship game. They're just awaiting to see who they will play and where they will play them for the SWAT championship. Again, we have a timeout by Southern because they are reviewing the fumble. Eric Dooley asking for this video review with his team down 44-21. Let's have a look, see ourselves. It looked like the football was out. I'm with you. Yep. Nice strip that time. Coming in to make the tackle. McGannon. Rips that football out. And that's something that Alcorn practices. Of course, we have strip drills uh, every Wednesday where we go through taking the football away. And that's one of the things that makes this team successful. How about Leachman? He learned that very well, didn't he? <laughs> took it away from the running back and took it in for six the other way. So you see what the Braves like to do. So you have to... Secure the football when you go up against this all-corn defense because um, they will kill you. 
uh, taking the football away. Update on that Grambling score. Grambling trailing Alabama State 14 to nothing. The Hornets have been hot lately in the East. So Grambling may fall to 3-3 three and three in SWAC play today. And that may take them out of the running if they lose this afternoon. So Alcorn looking in real good shape right now. I would say so. Looks like the review on this is over. Eric Dooley had challenged the ruling of a fumble. So the Braves will come on and take a few knees and she wrote. Well, Southern out of timeouts, out of challenges. And it looks like the Braves will go into victory formation. And three snaps should do it. What an overall great game. Fred McNair's team. They had a bit of a hiccup early. The key McNeil fumbled, uh, fumbled the punt return. Resulted in the Southern touchdown by Rhymes, but since then it has been clicking on all cylinders. There's one knee. A yeah, great afternoon for Aaron Allen. 18 of 29, 255 yards, two touchdowns. He did have the one interception, but he was only sacked one time this afternoon. spread the football around. Six different receivers caught the football for the Alcorn Braves this afternoon. Howard led the team in rushing 128 yards on the day. Two more snaps as you see members of the offensive line dancing. Second knee. Well, you're Texas Southern, you're watching the tape, and you're looking at number seven on defense for sure. <laughs> you better just protect the football against all comers. And Coach Fred McNair, he just wants to get out of here with, you know, unscathed. One more will do it. Plenty to celebrate tonight in Lorman. That'll do it. Alcorn State with a convincing 44-21 victory here this afternoon, Ken. Well, it was an all-around great football game for Alcorn. They came out. They struggled early on. Once they settled down and got into this ball game, they just completely dominated Southern, really in all three phases of the ball game. Up front, the offensive line, particularly the left side, did a great job. Aaron Allen ran the offense to perfection, except for one mistake. And the defense, you have to give them all the credit in the world, forcing four turnovers against a good Southern offense. Ken, it was a lot of fun. Thanks, man. It was awesome. For Ken Moore, I'm Jason Metcho saying so long from Lorman. Final score, Alcorn 44, Southern 21. All games airing on the ESPN networks are streamed live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN.